Long before Siri or Alexa, there was Eliza, a pioneer in the world of chatbots. Contrary to its modern counterparts, Eliza wasn't designed to control your lights or play music. Instead, it aimed for something far more intriguing, simulating a conversation with a therapist. Unlike anything seen before, Eliza challenged our understanding of human-machine interaction. So, how did this early chatbot work? Let's delve into the fascinating story of Eliza and explore how this early chatbot paved the way for the sophisticated AI assistance we know today. How it all started. The history of bots stretches back to the 1950s when the pioneering British computer scientist Alan Turing began exploring the concept of machine intelligence. Turing posed a profound question. Can machines think? In 1950, he published a highly influential article titled Computing Machinery and Intelligence. In this paper, Turing delved into the idea that machines could exhibit intelligent behavior. According to Alan Turing, a machine can be considered intelligent if it can convincingly impersonate a human during a real-time conversation, such that the person interacting with it believes they are conversing with another human rather than a machine. One of the most significant contributions of Turing's work is what we now call the Turing test. This test was designed to determine whether a machine can exhibit intelligent behavior indistinguishable from that of a human. The test set a foundational benchmark for assessing machine intelligence. Alan Turing's work in this area captured the interest of many scholars and researchers, including Joseph Weizenbaum, a German computer scientist and associate professor at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, popularly known as MIT. Weizenbaum was particularly fascinated by Turing's ideas about machine intelligence and the potential for computers to exhibit human-like behavior. Weizenbaum's engagement with Turing's work led him to explore the ethical and social implications of AI. In 1966, a program named ELISA, short for Electronic Linguistic Analyzer, was developed by Joseph Weizenbaum, marking the creation of the world's first chatbot. Weizenbaum's primary goal with ELISA was to explore the potential of natural language processing and to see how effectively a computer program could interact with humans using everyday language. The name ELISA comes from Eliza Doolittle, a character in George Bernard Shaw's play Pygmalion. In the play, Eliza Doolittle is a flower girl who is taught to speak with an upper-class accent, transforming her speech to fit into high society and deceive others about her true social background. Similarly, Weizenbaum's Elisa, designed to simulate conversation, could engage in structured dialogues that mimicked human interaction. However, just like the character Eliza Doolittle didn't truly understand the upper-class world she was trying to fit into, Weizenbaum's Eliza also lacked genuine understanding. Eliza's responses were based on program scripts and patterns rather than true comprehension of the conversation. It could simulate human-like interactions to some extent, but it did not grasp the deeper meanings, emotions, or context of the conversations it participated in. How it works, Eliza was created to give the illusion of understanding and interacting like a real person, though it followed a mechanical process. Eliza uses a method called pattern matching and substitution to generate its responses. Here's how it works. When a person types a message to Eliza, the program scans the input for specific keywords or phrases. Based on these keywords, Eliza selects a pre-programmed response that incorporates these words. For example, if someone says, my mother cooks good food, Eliza would recognize the word mother. It might then respond with a preset question like, tell me more about your family. This technique makes it seem as if Eliza understands the conversation and is responding thoughtfully. The responses are designed to be open-ended encouraging the person to continue talking and providing more input for Eliza to work with. Despite the illusion of meaningful interaction, Eliza doesn't actually understand the content of the conversation. It simply follows rules to pick out keywords and generate responses that fit the patterns it recognizes. This approach created a sense of having a real conversation with a human, even though Eliza was just following a program script. The clever use of pattern matching and substitution allowed Eliza to mimic human-like interaction in a surprisingly effective way for its time. Before then, the system worked by taking the words that a human user typed into a computer and matching them with a list of possible pre-written responses. 
These responses were enhanced by MADSLIP, a programming language designed for LISP processing, which was also created by Joseph Weizenbaum. MADSLIP helped the system process and manage the lists of possible responses more efficiently, allowing it to simulate a conversation with the user. By using this approach, the system could respond in a way that seemed more natural and coherent, even though it was relying on predefined scripts and the capabilities of the MADSLIP programming language. This combination of user input, scripted responses, and sophisticated list processing was an early step in the development of computer-based conversation systems. ELIZA Capabilities One of ELIZA's most famous implementations was the Doctor Script, which was designed to mimic the conversational style of a well-known psychotherapist named Carl Rogers. Carl Rogers was famous for his client-centered approach, where he often asked open-ended questions and reflected on what the client said to encourage deeper exploration of thoughts and feelings. The doctor script allowed Eliza to simulate a therapy session between the user and a virtual psychiatrist. When users typed in statements or questions, Eliza would respond with pre-programmed replies that mirrored the user's input in the form of questions or prompts. For instance, if a user typed, I feel anxious, Eliza might respond with, why do you feel anxious? This technique encouraged users to continue the conversation, exploring their thoughts and emotions more deeply. The interaction with Eliza often resulted in an engaging conversational experience. Many users felt as though they were interacting with a real human therapist because of the way Eliza's responses encouraged them to elaborate on their statements. This illusion of understanding and empathy created a sense of genuine conversation, even though Eliza was simply using a set of predetermined rules and patterns to generate its responses. This led to people sharing their thoughts and feelings with Eliza, a computer program that mimicked a non-judgmental therapist. Even though they were aware that Eliza was simply a program computer, many found comfort in confiding in it. This reaction revealed how people could form connections with technology even when they knew it wasn't genuinely understanding them. Despite this seemingly positive reception, the creator of Eliza, Joseph Weizenbaum, was not impressed by what he saw as the program's success. While Eliza made a big impact on the world, sparking conversations about artificial intelligence and human interaction with machines, Weizenbaum himself was skeptical about its deeper implications. He firmly believed that Eliza and programs like it could never truly replicate human emotions or intellect. Weizenbaum argued that Eliza was merely a tool, an extension of the human mind, and not something that could ever replace genuine human interaction or understanding. He saw Eliza as a simple aid, useful perhaps in specific contexts, but fundamentally limited in its capacity to engage with human emotions on a profound level. This perspective highlights the ongoing debate about the role of artificial intelligence in our lives and its potential to impact human relationships and mental processes. The Turing Test Eliza is often regarded as the first computer program that came close to passing the Turing Test. In a recent preprint research paper titled, Does GPT-4 Pass the Turing Test? Researchers from UC San Diego explored whether OpenAI's GPT-4 language model could convincingly mimic human interaction. The study compared GPT-4 with human participants, its predecessor, GPT-3.5, and the older chatbot, Eliza, to see which would most effectively trick participants into thinking they were interacting with a human. The findings were intriguing. Human participants were only able to correctly identify other humans 63% of the time. This suggests that humans often struggle to distinguish between conversations with other humans and those with AI. Surprisingly, Eliza, which uses a simplistic approach to reflecting users' input, performed better in some respects than the AI model behind the free version of ChatGPT. Eliza's simple conversational tricks seem to create an illusion of understanding that sometimes outperform the more sophisticated responses from GPT-3.5. This study sheds light on the complexity of human-AI interaction and suggests that even basic conversational strategies can sometimes fool people more effectively than advanced AI models. It shows the ongoing challenges in AI development and the nuances involved in creating machines that can convincingly emulate human behavior. The Future of Chatbots Eliza's creation was a big milestone in the field of artificial intelligence in human-computer interaction. 
It demonstrated that computers could be programmed to process and respond to human language in a way that mimicked conversation, opening up new possibilities for how we interact with machines. Weizenbaum's work laid the foundation for the development of more advanced chatbots and conversational agents that we see today. It inspired subsequent generations of researchers and developers. Eliza holds the distinction of being the first chatterbot in the history of computer science. Interestingly, when Eliza was created, the term chatterbot didn't exist. It wasn't until 1994 that Michael Malden, the creator of another conversational program named Julia, a verbot, coined the term chatterbot to describe these interactive conversational programs. Following Eliza, several other notable chatterbots advanced the field. In 1972, Perry was developed by psychiatrist Kenneth Colby. Perry was designed to simulate a patient with paranoid schizophrenia and was more advanced than Eliza in terms of its ability to maintain a conversation. In 1983, Ractor, short for raconteur, was created. It was a chatterbot known for generating somewhat coherent and sometimes poetic text using a more sophisticated language generation system compared to its predecessors. Then in 2005, Jabberwocky was introduced. This chatbot aimed to mimic human conversation more closely than previous bots by learning from interactions with users. Jabberwocky's development marked a significant step towards creating more natural and engaging conversational agents. Each of these chatterbots contributed to the evolving field of artificial intelligence, pushing the boundaries of how machines can interact with humans through text-based communication. With the advent of artificial intelligence, chatbots have indeed become a significant trend. They've evolved into sophisticated programs capable of holding conversations, providing information, and offering support through virtual chat interfaces. Today, they're not just tools for personal assistance, but also serve as valuable aids within communities. Modern chatbots like ChatGPT have become an integral part of our daily lives. The journey that began with Eliza has now blossomed into a revolution in how we interact with technology, making chatbots an indispensable aspect of our digital experiences. If you have made it this far, let us know what you think in the comment section below. For more interesting topics, make sure you watch the recommended video that you see on the screen right now. Thanks for watching.